Well, well, and hello, and welcome to the podcast. Uh, once again, for the remainder of this month, we are honored to have good friend and brother, Dr. Scott Young, back with us. Uh, we haven't had him on in a while, so he's he's been gracious to come back with us uh, to give us an update on all things Nasara Jasara and what he is seeing on his end for that, that will give many of you encouragement for what is to come. Again, if you are new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share so this channel can grow and others can gain in the knowledge you've been afforded. As you know, Dr. Scott is a certified board audiologist, a father, husband, and a kingdom believer, and has core concentrated during this movement on all things Nassara Jasara. Dr. Scott, welcome back to the podcast. Hey, how you doing? Good, brother. Good to see you, man. And uh, happy belated Father's Day to you. Thanks. I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. So, um, Dr. Scott, uh, we haven't talked in a while, so I'm sure you have some updates. Uh, there's been some very, uh, we're going to show a video in a little bit for people to see for posterity, but uh, uh, there are people are kind of wondering where things are in the process. I, wa I watched one of your podcasts recently. You were talking about sort of a breakdown of who gets Nasara first and how it works. So for those who haven't seen it, can you kind of touch on that briefly? Um, so one of the things I would say is that first off, you know, when the QFS sets in place, and by the way, you don't have to buy QFS, you don't have to set it up. It's already set up for you. I always say right. it's kind of like an Experian credit report. No one like signs in for an Experian credit report. It's just loaded up into the systems. So as a guy who actually, um, you know, over the years, we've had people who come, who come into my clinic and they're they want 12 months, same as cash, or they want a, a payment plan kind of thing. We utilize, uh, for instance, Care Credit and Wells Fargo kinds of things. So there's a little set of information that you do. And what those are is for unsecured loans. Now, if you have unsecured versus secured loans, uh, there's a different amount of credit information that you're, do you're doing. Okay. And some of it's looking at your debt to income ratio and all the other stuff. Well, guess what? Every time something happens, if you have a credit inquiry, let's say you're going to, you know, three places and you're trying to buy a couch and you're doing a credit inquiry, um, that actually loads into the system. Now, some people get all sideways when their credit score goes down by 25 points because it got pinged three times. And I go, don't worry about it. Tomorrow it's going to be up, you know? And, you know, there are, there were those credit scores. So I'm going to deal with this. Credit scores are, have two major points that they look at. They're looking at your debt to income ratios. And secondly, do you pay on time? Now, uh, there might be other ones out there, but they're not totally relevant. Now, we have people who don't have any debt. Um, and haven't used debt in a billion years, and they got no credit score, but that is a very credit worthy type of person. And so this is the weirdness of the system <laughs> about how that happens. Now, you don't, I mean, it pings up, it takes a little time, might take two to three weeks. For instance, you could sell a car, buy a new one, that old car will still be in the credit reports. And the new one is on, but they haven't even pulled off the old one because the dealership hasn't shown that they paid it off. They're going through, you know, a sell of that car through auctions and all kinds of other things that are happening in the background. So when you look at your experience credit report, it's actually far behind, you know, the ratios of, of what should, should show for you. And so one of the things that people get, you know, all sideways on is that, you know, as soon as Nasara hits, Will I be able to go right over to my credit report, for instance, and see that everything got paid off? And the answer is probably not because those old systems are tied into SWIFT, mm -hmm. um, your routing number. And what happens in there is that you it, it takes time for that to get filtered through. Now, even the CBDCs of the Great Reset, which is never happening, and you know the QFS system of Nasara, both of them are lightning speed. And, and capabilities. That was the whole point. So your QFS, all that really is, is just a mechanism inside the, of, of the system. So that'll come up like that. Um, after that point in time, we'll see little things that happen. And there's no, I mean, I can't give it an order. No one has exact order. I mean, you could say that one happens and someone argues over this issue, right? But 
in essence, it's going to be gold backed by treasury. Um, so that makes it constitutional. So your U.S. note would be then gold backed. Secondarily, you cannot bring in the old debts. And, and this is going to mess people up because we've gotten people like all sideways. Now, that kind of stuff can happen pretty darn quickly. But how would you know about it? Even if it happens tomorrow morning, um, would the systems actually show it on your side? No, the answer is not going to happen. I always think about a guy, this dude was nuts. He was a patient of ours years and years ago, he used to be a dentist. And so he buys a set of hearing aids with us, right? And, and this is, man, this is like 20 years ago. Buys a set of hearing aids on his credit card, has this return privilege. And, he, and, and audiology is a screwed up thing. You got a 30-day return privilege on a custom device. It's a wholly nutty thing. Mm -hmm. He returns a set of hearing aids and he's a jerk in the middle of this return, right? With this was one of my bosses at the time. And and like two months later, he comes back and he goes, I want to buy a hearing aids. And I'm like, Jeff, what are we doing? Don't do it with him. He's gonna make you nuts, right? Of course, he returns a set of hearing aids, you know, in that 30-day um, trial period, right? Here's what he's doing. He's on the phone. We haven't even gone through the process of, of, of refunding. And he's on the phone with a credit card company. It's not gone through yet. It's not gone through yet. And I'm like, it takes time. So as you see some of that stuff going through, it will take a little time for filtering through. And the only way to know about that is to go on your mortgage, you know, kind of thing, or a credit card, whatever, and go online. You might see some of that happening. Uh, so, and there's all kinds of crazy systems that are, are, are funking out for people. I mean, um, my bank statement, I did a whole bunch, I do a lot of bill pay and online that bill pay stuff was messing up like crazy. I mean, people weren't getting payments and I'm like, well, what's happened? I mean, I mean, I was getting like behind with mortgage issue and this issue and, you know, the electricity company, I'm going, what's going on? And for like a month and a half, it was complete nightmare level. That's the new systems. They were flipping over into new systems. And that is part of that QFS Nasara kind of stuff. So that's the cool stuff that's out there. So it takes time for that kind of thing to happen. So the, the deaths will kind of happen immediately, but you might not see it for days or a week or so. You know, no, exactly right, and and well as always, Scott, uh, well said. Um, so, kind of a question comment because you and I have some history together. Obviously, uh, you were talking about the QFS, and we believe on our side, our team, that uh, you know Q, uh, XRP and you know that type of thing, that all the cryptos that are going to be asset backed. You see, Tether just recently went to a gold stable coin. So people have been saying, well, are these cryptos going to be asset backed or not yet? Well, Tether has now done that. And I'm sure somebody will still push back even when that comes out, which we put in our Telegram. But anyway, do you see uh, XRP and other cryptos factoring into the QFS to, to help that lightning speed process transition? Um, I'm not a believer in, in, in XRP and QF, uh, XL, XLM, you know, kind of stuff as gold backed because I would say, what what would have to occur for that to be gold backed is it's a private firm utilizing mm -hmm. public monies, which is exactly what we don't like about the Fed, right? That's a private firm utilizing public monies. So one of the things, and I first brought that up years and years ago with some with the crypto people, and I was learning about crypto as well and and what was happening with that. But um, then they were going well. It, you, you'll as soon as that happens, your amount of whatever shares of crypto that you have of that particular crypto would be, uh, you have to sell it back to the company. Well, I would go, wait a second, um, 1939, I mean, 33, um, every bit of your gold was required to be sold back to the Fed at $20.60. There was actually a pushback from the Bank of France that did not want to sell their 1.5 million ounces of gold. Now, I mean, it's a crazy amount of money, right? And, and here's what they did. They 
and they required it. They, it was a $10,000 fine. That would be like, you know, a million dollar fine today. That's a crazy amount. One year later, they had already popped gold up to 33 bucks a share or an ounce, excuse me. Right. So my thing is a little different. I know people won't like some of this statement, but um, first off, to require a private person to sell off an asset is frankly illegal because what if I don't want to? I mean, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. what if I don't want to? That would actually break those systems. Um, and secondly, to say that a private company would have would be utilizing public assets isn't a problem. The way simply to look at this is, is this. You let's say you own 100 shares of, of, of XRP. Great, whatever that might be. I don't care what you owe or you own, excuse me. Um, XRP is, and when you look at the statistics of what they say about themselves, Stellar, Ripple, and how they how they look at themselves. Is there a transfer mechanism between one point to another? They're a payment route. And there's a fractional kind of amount of, of money that is transferred. I mean, because it costs to do a transfer, right? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what I believe the vehicle actually is for those two things. And this is very unpopular with, with people, but I go, listen, there's a way to make a private company actually be a part of this system. So the QFS is in the middle of everything, right? And yet people are going to write a check, right? And they write a check from Joe to John, and that's bank A to bank B. Well, how is the connection there? Well, the connection is severed because the Fed is the, is the connector, right? Your routing number is a connector from bank A to B, so the 10 bucks can move by check or credit card. Okay. Now, when you sever that connection and that tie, you have to have a connector between the two banks that don't know each other. The simplest mechanism is XRP and XLM. They are one of the most simple mechanism payment points. It's listed on their website that they are a payment type of structure. Mm -hmm. And what I would say to you is that no, people are going to get mad. And I can just feel people's blood boiling when I hear this, but I go, listen, right. you want to make money? I'm cool with you making money off your XRP, right? Or whatever you want to pick. But here's how it works. The bank would pay you every single transaction that goes through. You're talking millions upon millions of transactions that have to happen because we have transactions by, by the way, for instance, as a business owner, um, each one, and this is really difficult as a business owner, I cannot get federal agencies to um, write me a check. They sometimes don't even send me what's called an EOB, an electronic um, benefits, like blanking out the name. But basically, they'll just send out, like, it'll be loaded up on my bank account. And then we're sitting there going, who is that? You know, I mean, $1,300 payment, $87 payment for what? You know, and who is that that played for? And then we're having to go backtrack it all. It's a bunch of annoyance for, for a person like me. Well, guess what happens is that those are, that's an, e, it's called an EFT transaction from mm -hmm. their bank account to my bank account. And you do these, these kinds of things. Well, guess what? If you don't have the Fed, you have to be able to facilitate that. Or you have to do credit card payments or whatever types of payments. XRP and XLM are lightning fast payment processes that would connect them. So if where would you make the most amount of money? The answer is down the road, on it's privatized, the bank would require, I would have to pay the payment for that transfer mechanism. Now, it's it's fractions of pennies, but if you realize tens of millions of transactions that would occur, mm -hmm. um, it's it's a wonderful process. And so I go, hey, listen, you'll make tons of money down the road. That's the coolest thing in the world. I have no problem with that. But what that does is it makes it truly constitutional and the treasury, which is run by, has to be run by Congress, mm -hmm. okay, 
and would have control of the money and the QFS would just be part of the vehicle of this. And so I believe that's the, 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 the more effective and frankly constitutional way of explaining that kind of possibility with that. Um, so again, I don't have a problem with, with uh, cryptos in any way, shape and form, but you know, the reality is the QFS is a type of crypto itself um, because for, for instance, there are unbanked populations all over the world. How does Mr. Unbanked in the Congo have utilized the the, the new currency for his Congo I mean, his nation? Um, in the past, he's had to use cash transfers back and forth. Well, in the future, it'll be very simple. He can have a QFS transaction for the coffee that he's making, you know, and whatever that that thing might be. So what happens is it it is a blockchain uh, distributed ledger kind of system that would look at it and say, okay, well then he made those transfers and back and forth, and and the and the banking system can't get in the middle of his business, mm. and it, it's it's a beautiful system. Now again, you still have to deal with all of the other uh, mechanisms of credit cards, EFTs, credit. Uh, uh, bank charges, all kinds of, or uh, sorry, um, checks, whatever that might be. So that's another way of looking at that. That is not as thrilling to some of the, you know, the, the crypto people, but it actually does answer the, the things. And I've kind of run this up the chain and, and they've going, yeah, that's, that's what it's going to be. So. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Scott, for that. I appreciate the articulation. You know, it's funny you mentioned, uh, I'll give you a breather for a minute. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned the, uh, Fractions of a penny because you know, we know Hollywood does predictive programming. You remember that movie Office Space? Oh, God, they told yeah. us right in front of us that they're it's doing great. fractions of a penny. So that, you know, 25 years ago, they were already putting that front and center, right? Right. And so, wrapping up the XRP discussion, or, or just cutting, adding an addendum, to what you're saying, uh, for better or for worse, we're working with the banks through a transitional process, right? Right. And so, um, you know, we're seeing one of the things I love about Basel Three is it's forcing transparency with the banks to show their on their ledger, their balance sheets, the gold and silver they're having. So if people are wondering, well, why are my branches closing or why are my branches being minimized? Because we're seeing an uptick of that. I think it's partly because a lot of these banks have to cut the fat because they don't have the gold and silver. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of larger banks and even smaller banks that can't cut the mustard be going away. And ultimately, to your point, we're going to a peer-to-peer -peer system where you and I, if I want to hire you for audiology services, a hearing test for my music, I could pay you direct, like a right. Zelle, like a PayPal, like a Venmo, but without the bank is the middleman. Does it make sense? Right. And therefore, what, what would happen, the middleman between that, I mean, because it doesn't know John's one, it doesn't know Scott's, and and how does it know the difference? I mean, I mean, because the reality is the 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 and, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain it another way too. Sure. Um the XRP is just that connector between it, okay? The QFS is the basic. I want you to think about QFS is like the server, okay? But in, in essence, I believe that XRP, XLM, the Ripple, the you know, these, these types of products out there, and I think there are other ones that are probably not going to hit, you know, they're not going to be very uh, well utilized, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, and banks could choose to, I mean, and we should have competition, by the way, too. Um, you should be going, you know what? If you don't do it very well, guess what? You're out of here. We're going to go to X1 um, or Y1 or Z type of, of transfer mechanism that does a better job for us. Um, that is actually the right way of doing that. Because I believe we're going to move into a performance type of economy. But I think the 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 reality is as that as that transfer mechanism happens, again, it's a fraction of of pennies. And so office space is a gorgeous analogy. And it's how they've actually stolen mm -hmm. multi-millions of dollars. So you got it, I mean, that is predictive pro programming to the max. Yeah. Um, that's how they they siphon off money between um, people. Totally. So on the backs of that, the next segue I want to talk to you about, which is a, a hot topic, very Nassara related and just constitutional related, which is taxes. You hear President Trump giving comms because we've, and I'm going to show you an example in a second for the audience uh, that he's already done. He's talking about no taxes on tips, 
abolishing the federal income tax, uh, you know, basically collecting tariffs to run the government, which will be a part of Nassara, 90% smaller. He's already giving people comms we on the inside know he's already done for the normies that have no idea what's what's about to hit them. So could you maybe touch on that briefly? Yeah, I mean, I, and and by the way, I, I, know, I know John gets this too, and I get this as well. If you want to ask a question about tax, be specific, okay? Don't ask me like, are taxes going away? My first answer is like, which one are you talking about? Yeah. Like, I mean, there tariff is a tax, okay? Um, import, export, is it, you know, that's part of the import act, export kind of thing. Um, you know, there are, you know, there's always a possibility that there could have an exemption and a tariff point. I mean, I don't know. I mean, but mm -hmm. the probability is there will not be exemptions. I mean, Canada, and forget about America for a second. Let's just say Canada and Australia want to, um, you know, do some type of, uh, you know, grain for fish, make up something, whatever that is. Um, right. Well, you know, if to to support your local economy, you create this thing called the tariff. And so it becomes much more effective for Canada to, to do her own fishing. Let, let's use that as an example. Um, so it rewards the people for doing it. But if there's a need supply and demand issue if the uh, if the demand is so high but the supply can't be there they might consider utilizing mm -hmm. things like tariffs okay that's that's the whole purpose of this thing right well mm -hmm. um when we when we look at different taxes there are multitudes of taxes property tax and i always say this property tax is a state issue okay um Yet, I mean, it used to be. Um, now, I was been I've been corrected on this, but in uh, the state of, and I'm going to have to get this right. I think it's the state of Washington used to not have property tax, and it was like, why? I mean, and and you know, it's happening. And in Oregon, there was no sales tax. So guess what people would do? They would live in Portland, Vancouver. They would go across the border to do their their buying. And, and it was it was a really weird system. So they were they were gaming the system. Sure. Um, so sales tax is a very useful kind of system. If John makes a hundred thousand dollars, but Scott makes thirty thousand dollars a year, who's going to spend more in sales tax? John. Now, what we need to do is is deletes the sales tax. Specifically, we're talking about a federal level, uh, delete the sales tax on a used item. Okay. If I um if I'm selling this bottle and it's a new bottle, then we should have a sales tax upon that particular bottle. But if I'm on a an Etsy or whatever and I'm reselling that bottle, it's already been paid of sales tax. So you talk about double taxation. Right. Um so that has to get fixed. And by the way, do you know that as a business owner, I have to buy desks and paper and all that other crap, right? But do you know that they actually charge in the state of Oklahoma, they charge me a, and, and I'm going to say it wrong, but it's, it's like a, it's basically a property tax on the items that I have in my business. Hmm. I'm like, you what? I mean, I already paid sales tax on that. And, and we're talking, and so I have to like make sure that I notate every computer printer that, you know, dies and I got rid of four computers and, you know, and I, so that we can kind of reduce the stock of the business. And then they will reassess that point. This is like double, there's double taxation everywhere. So those are kinds of things that have to be a state run issue. Um, the federal level is going to be of the IRS. So when we talk about that, the tip thing, that actually, it, it was a touchstone. Um, and, and I think John knows this too. Those are touchstones. I mean, that, that hits people between the teeth. So when you do that, you're actually, that is truly income tax. I mean, because if I make, you know, in, in the past, I mean, if you made, 
three dollars in um you know normal wages right and this is a very common kind of number and then because they didn't have to they don't have to pay minimum wage on that because that person's probably making 10 12 15 20 bucks whatever number in tips so they know that happens well one of the things that people do is they hide the tips so they don't they self report a lot lower amount and the IRS gets all sideways with these people and and you have no idea what the kinds of things the IRS tries to do to you well once you take that away and see that's it's not called flat tax do not mess that up because there is a movement out there or there has been a movement out there to go to a 10% income flat tax that's not happening okay we need to delete the tax code of the IRS so that would be your federal and your state tax um now trump actually sort of said this 4 years ago that all of us were like what um he was talking about uh there was a there's a type of tax that a business owner pays so he or she might have a um, we have to pay on this federal taxation part and he was talking about eliminating that and we were like oh that's irs kind of thing mm -hmm. so the irs system has to be replaced and people don't you know understand this your state income tax by the way when i've been audited do you know who audited me it, the last audit went through it was a it was a state organization the state organization was auditing my federal and state taxes and they were just doing a random audit and they started screwing with me right this is what they do and and so you go wait a second the state organization is looking at my federal income taxation it's because they're the same thing right it's just how they steal money from you so they steal three to five, seven percent from your state one. And in, and by the way, in uh, Texas, there is no state income tax. So you go, well, yeah, but then they make it up in other ways. So the income tax system, that's capital gains, that's all that other stuff, all that stuff is IRS stuff. And that has to be deleted because the Fed is deleted. So I hope that helps out. Exactly. And thank you. Thank you for that because that was segueing to my oh oh it does in fact i'm gonna show you a document that the receipt from the irs uh, uh, a business several years and, and you know they they're they're on their way out so they're trying to get whatever they can you know sure. they're doing that with the sba grant uh, trying to calm a loan and calm their exodus uh, this is to give you and my audience some encouragement because people think Oh, the IRS is still alive and well. No, they're not the way you think they are. They're being worked from the inside out and I'm going to prove it. So I don't know if you can, I, I personally, folks, I'm not showing you the whole document because it's my private information on there. So please don't complain. I can't see all of it. Understand why I'm doing this, but um, I don't know if you can see that, but it says clearly at the top department of the treasury. You see that? Yeah. Then yeah. it says internal revenue service, but department of treasury is highlighted. Right. Now look at the seal. Uh, let's see if I can show this to you. And that seal that's, is is the now that's the difference. By the way, Department of Treasury has been around for a little bit underneath that because what that's the fake right. of saying that it's legal. Right. Um, but that seal thing is only showed up in the last four years. Correct. So, so that's Trump, the weird part. Because Trump baked the Fed into the Treasury, so it took them two and a half years to get a letter back to me. And yep. I said, I talked to the attorney on this case for the tax court. Why did it take so long? Oh, we're being restructured internally. Right. They're going from a debt collector to a credit returner, basically a negative to a positive. And I'm going to read to you what it says because you guys won't see it. Dear Mr. Dowling, our office uh, is resolving your tax case by in the enclosed decision, which shows zero deficiency in income tax and zero penalty owed and a bunch of other legal mumbo jumbo. Of course, you're not going to apply penalties if you don't have an, if you don't have a principal, sure. right? So, um, and people will say, well, how'd you do that? I very simply, I, I'll be very transparent. I said, there's, it's a, it's a long answer, which I'll keep succinct. I started by saying in red ink, red is the color of the living man, woman, and blood, not black, which is death. Um, 
minus my shirt. <laughs> I, I'm doing laundry, so give me a break, folks. Uh, I said, I do not consent as I have no contract with you per UCC Uniform Commercial Code 1-308, which says I did not knowingly, willfully, or volunteer to pay or consent to any commercial entities, which the IRS was and now has been converted. So that should give people a lot of encouragement. I now yeah. want to say, segue Dr. Scott to the video that we talked about previously, the aforementioned video. This came from one of my team members, John, give him full credit and disclosure as I always do. And it's a very interesting video. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I'd like to get uh, your reaction on it. So let me share the screen and then you can tell me what your thoughts are and audience as well. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, now I'm gonna play it and then we'll go to your comments. But this is a this is what the bank had transferred. Twenty one trillion dollars. Twenty one trillion dollars, which is what our debt ceiling was at that twenty seventeen. So our debts have been paid off. What you see on the news is a lie. We do not have a debt. We are not thirty two thousand two hundred thirty two trillion dollars in debt. We are not in debt. We are out of debt because of President Trump, and he is in the process of tearing down and dismantling a corporation and uh, the Federal Reserve. So all this coming down, <clears throat> you will pay- It's down. coming through pretty softly. So yeah. you can okay. pause and we can, uh, I can explain that a little bit more. I think it's it's actually a real interesting point. Um, I would, the only pushback I, I might say on that is that, mm -hmm. um, so, and I don't remember the date when that, I think it was done in 2020, but whatever. Um, in that time frame, we were about 21, trillion in debt okay right. so so the the basic time frame now um my only pushback would be is did we pay them back 21 trillion dollars for something that's an illegal uh code and and i go and here's why i would i would give us a, as a caution point in here and this will this will happen by the way in in a couple other ways this is my prediction point but um the the federal debt the what the fed says right now today it's like what 35 36 you 35, know trillion. And, and so so at here's what happens the 14th amendment under the fourth section says that if there is a a um international and i'm going to use the scott terminology but the international statement of debt the american public does not owe it now executive order 13818 that was done in november december of 2017 started putting the panic out there. If you have crimes against humanity, we'll block your property. And there's a whole bunch of different things. Basically, mm -hmm. it's a bankruptcy of them. Okay. Now, um, would we drop $21 trillion on the cabal? And my response is no, we wouldn't do that. Um, what we would do is cancel the debt. So I think what, and I, I had to deep dive this one to check what that was out, but there is a way of canceling or satisfying a debt rather than paying a debt. You do not ever want to give them money because what it would do is restart their, you know, th yeah. they would, if, if they had $21 trillion, I mean, and by the way, they're, I mean, the White Hats have a ton more than that. The monies that are coming into the world are there, but you cannot pay them um because they're a criminal organization see that would be that would be making them you know even if you put away some of the bad boys the underlings would restart the, the craziness again what what i believe what we're talking about is a satisfaction um to it and so for instance um in bankruptcy what occurs, there are two different types of, of ways to satisfy a bankruptcy. Is for instance, you have a debt. Um, you know, if if someone owes, you know, a line item point of 15 different credit creditors, mm -hmm. and they have a million dollars left over for those 15 creditors, but those 15 creditors, let's say the total amount of debt for them is five million dollars 
you know, over it depends on which of the creditors of the 15 when you do. What they do is they line them up in a particular order. Now, that's the weird part that we haven't really ever gone through. You'd have to have a lawyer tell you why that happens. But what they do is they run through that million dollars. And when they run out, it's over. So, you know, the dude that's on the 13th level of that or whatever level you want to talk about, what he does is says, you have to write it off. Now, I was a part of this. I had a, a business partner that was in his foreclosure and personal bankruptcy. And I asked the state, because I and this, this happened way before Nassar. This is when I was learning about it and, and learning from other things. And I had he had a $70,000 debt with me, I mean, with the business, right? He wasn't taking any of the other debts, but he had a pure debt to the company. And I get this statement from the, from the, the state and it said $70,000 um, is satisfied. And I was like, no, it's not. I don't have, I mean, like, I'm not a bank. I don't have cash to go like pay it off. And they go, you can't go in. And it, it's called, there's a statement that happens in Medicare. It's called balance billing. I can't go and bill him for that. It's, it's an unpayable debt. So what you do is you throw that on your losses and you don't have to pay, you know, uh, you don't have to pay future uh, taxes toward that or your capital gains. So what I believe what what she's showing, which is a fascinating document, is a satisfaction of that. Um, so we think that we owe that money, but it's 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 going to be satisfied. Now, I do believe that the local banks who have been hoodwinked into the whole, uh, the Fed, the, the 13 Fed, you know, uh, banking corporations like Chase and other ones, that the local banks, they're going, hey, man, we just got hand locked, you know, we, I mean, handcuffed into the system. We had no other way of doing this. And if you don't pay their debts back, let's say you have a local bank that's worth a, a billion dollars. Well, that's a big bank, but that's not, you know, big like Chase is, for instance, do they lose all of their their money in debt? And Basel three actually intimates that they can be, uh, their debt to an income ratio is 90%. So they, they're loaning out $900 billion, or 900 million, sorry, to the billion dollars. Well, if they lose $900 million, you might as well just go bye-bye, all the banks go bye-bye. Um, mm -hmm. You can't do that. So we have to fund them. And what that would be is not a satisfaction, but it would be a someone, you know, goes in angel, angel gives them money in essence, right? So an angel funding of that. Um, so you have to do that um, to make sure that we go through that, that process. So, I mean, again, we don't know how much they would, they would give them. I believe they would, they, for the small banks, that are not hooked into the Fed. Now, everything is hooked into the Fed, but the small banks, non-Fed banks, um, are going through their bankruptcy reorganization already, mm -hmm. and they will be you know, funded back. Whereas Chase Bank, if I have a debt with them, Chase Bank just says, your debt's satisfied um, or dissolved. And, and the answer is, it's no different to you Either way, someone paid it or it's resolved and it's all good for you because you own that that car, whatever. And then, but to you, it doesn't really matter. So I think that's the the cool thing. And and this stuff has already been happening. And this is why the crazy has been going on. Um, the reality is we haven't owned the, owed that debt. We don't owe it. We don't have to pay them. We're just saying, sucks to be you. Basically, yeah. It's just basically reverse engineering the process. And, and that was the point of why I brought up my IRS, excuse me, internal revenue service letter, because you know, there's a difference between the IRS internal revenue service, one's in the corporation, one's in the constitution. Right. And I, I thought that video was interesting only from the aspect to share with you to get your counterpoint, but also he started doing that in 2017, according to the documents. And it made me think when he was doing his inauguration speech and he said today, we're transferring 
the power from the from the corrupt to we the to you the people we the right. people i'm giving you the power back to the people the power back and he's and he's privatizing states to secede away from the union so that's why you're seeing a lot of states not put taxes on gold and silver states having more freedom in legislature you take a state like tennessee which will be my future home thank god and on july 1st next monday i think it is um yeah, they know they're no longer having chemtrails and DARPA going on there and, and a whole bunch of other things. As, as far as I know, I don't believe they either they do. They, I don't think they have a state tax as of right now, but I'll have to check on that. But uh, a lot of those red states, if they're not already there, they will be there. So you're going to have no income tax. You're going to have no in many cases, no state tax and property tax. You may or may not be aware of this, but um, we've had several guests on our show that know common law trusts and how to work that. We have one coming next week that's going to articulate more on that. And they've indicated to us that uh, there's no law on the books, just like the IRS, that individuals have to pay taxes. Conversely, there's no law on the books. I don't know if people know this. Even my real estate agent, as wonderful as she is, didn't know this because, I mean, you're trained in a system. We all were. But my point is there's no law on the books, folks, that says that you have to record a deed that you buy a house with, with the municipality. So Correct. in a in a common law trust, you can bake the trust in you can bake the house, excuse me, into the trust, including the land, and not pay property taxes lawfully. Well, and and that's why I mean this is why um, th- this is why you, you got to catch what what what's actually happening with the QFS. The mm-hmm. QFS will deliver you when you are told to sign into it. Okay, when you're finally told to sign into it, it's there. Right. We know it's there. But when Scott finally signs into the into the 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 QFS, I then I'm inside of a trust. And guess what? It makes me invisible to the systems. So and 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 here's what happens. It it it's not like you have to like say, you know, to the IRS, see you later. I mean, they're just, I mean, it, it's it's kind of like um. Uh, give you an example. Um, the Baltimore Colts in 1983, I want to say, they decided to move out at the middle of the night, use mm. Mayflower vans, and they moved to Indianapolis. The Baltimore Colts ceased to exist, and they didn't pay back any one of the people who had season tickets. Well, they did have to do it on the back end, but but they ceased to exist in Baltimore and became Indianapolis Colts. Right. Um, so what happens to that old franchise? And there was actually the same thing happened with Cleveland Browns. So, um, you know, there's all these weird things that happens. That is a, you know, a forfeiture of that one type of system to a new system that comes out. That's literally what we're going to be seeing in essence. You actually will not exist to the systems and they don't know how to find you. Mm-hmm. And I've been learning about this because we actually had set up a sovereign organization back in 2011. And I barely knew what I was doing. I'm like sitting there going, like what? Um, <laughs> how are we doing this? Are we like a 501c3? It's, it's none of those. Those are it's a totally legal system, right. like the Vatican is. And and yet the QFS is that. The QFS transports you um, in a nature to this level, which means that the Fed can't touch you, the banking systems can't touch you, the uh, IRS can't touch you, mm-hmm. the government systems through the court court cases, you know, where people are going to court and going, um, are you Scott Young? I'm like, I am the entity as the person of Scott Young. Right. And and they go, and then they're all freaking out, right? It, by the way, this comes in W nines. When you have to sign a W nine, it says, "Are you the individual? Are you a citizen?" And there's these right. really stupid words for right. corporation, right? right? So what the QFS? And this is why you know, I mean, I love me some David Strait. Don't get me wrong; I think he's brilliant and beautiful at what he talks about. But the thing, the systems that I believe we're going to do is not everyone has to go out and do that. Um, We need David Strait people to tell us and explain it to everyone out there so that they learn who they are. 
But in essence, we're getting graced into the QFS. By the way, it sounds something like Jesus did, right? He graced you into the systems of, of God that made you incapable of, of being paying this penalty for sin. Well, that's really close, right? So I think I think that's when we see that QFS system. They will just be null and void, just like the Baltimore Colts or null and void from that point on. Yeah, you're just, I mean, every, you know, you know, as a business owner, you have a, a, a ledger side of de debits and credits. I mean, I always find it funny, the language, they say a credit card is credit, but it's actually debt and the debt is actually credit. It's a debit. It's the inverse of what they say, always the opposite. Right. But you have a, you have a profit and loss PNL on your business. The IRA, the internal revenue service is no different. Um, you know, David Strait was a, is a good gateway for certain things, but there are other organizations I think take it to a deeper level, but you got to start somewhere in the pool. Um, I know you're busy, so I'll, I'll leave this as the last question for today so you can get your vacation going at some point uh, once your schedule's cleared. Uh, one of the, there, are some, there are a lot of people in this movement, in the Patriot, Truth or Movement, whatever you want to call it, uh, that are very concerned with Nassara with respect to what they're going to make or what the debts that will be removed. And we've covered that. But then there are a lot of people, and I want those people to hear this, that we are listening and aware of their concerns that don't care about the money, that that's not their motivation. And that's fine too, different strokes. Everybody's got different roles to play in this movement, in this transition. They care about justice, the truth coming out. We care about wars and removing the senseless wars that Trump's always talked about. It, you're seeing a lot of exciting things now front and center where Putin and Xi and, and uh, Kim Jong-un are meeting and they're talking about peace deals, they're, you know, because I know a lot of things that the fake news wants to use fear porn to inculcate people because that was the old playbook that worked for a while. Sure. And so they're, they're a one trick pony like Satan. Um, and they're trying to get people worked up in, oh, there's going to be World War III, World War III. There isn't, but it has to look that way. So can you just kind of touch on that for the audience on both of our sides that is concerned about World War III and that there actually is motion taking place that is um, um, remediating that issue, basically. Right. Uh, and, and here's the reality. If let's say you just believed in Nasara and, and you think of Nasara as debt forgiveness. Well, OK, great. Um, or you let's say you only think about the gold back currency or you think about how the currencies are going to work, you know, throughout the world and all those other little issues. Um, or you're like Mike Lindell over here and your whole focus is on election fraud. Right. Or you're uh, who's the dude that did the 2000 mules, um, uh, oh. Dinesh. Um, and yeah, so Dinesh, Dinesh is doing the 2000 mules on the voter fraud kind of thing. And then we have other people over here that are talking about the court systems, right? So, and they're all over that court system, the gorgeous kind of conversations. What Nasara is, is a big old fat circle that encompasses all of them. In essence, you have to fix the election systems or you go onto a gold back standard and five minutes later or five months later, they'll rip that thing off and restart the great reset because they will, they will take you out in that, that system. Um, so you have to deal with the, uh, the election systems. The court systems were always built as a, uh, as a constitutional control over morons making stuff up um, in there. And so that's what their job was to do is are, are the interpretations of the law that Congress, Senate, or presidency makes, whether the, and it means executive orders, which has not been followed actually since you know through World War II. We haven't we haven't really followed what those things are done. And the courts are supposed to go, no, that's not constitutional, mm -hmm. and flick it off the page. Um, so you have to fix the court systems. You have to fix the election systems. You have to fix the QFS and and pull the people out of it. And and you have to and you have to wipe away the Fed. And and people, I always kind of do this. That one of the most simple things, those who understand Q actually knows. I don't remember the exact number, but it says gold will destroy the Fed. That is the 
ultimate statement of what we're talking about. So if you have someone and there's X truther that steps up and goes, there is no Nasara. And I go, let me ask you a question. Do you believe in a gold back currency? Well, yeah. Do you think that's a good idea? Yeah. Do you think the Fed is, is, is are evil people? Yeah. You just you just answered Nassar for me. Okay. You just pro- showed me how this actually works. And by the way, all those people that don't believe in, in the Nassar thing, they haven't really researched it. They've looked at some idiot thing online they don't really agree with, and they haven't really understood it. Okay. Where John understands it. It's like work through all those things. But you've got to also deal with the legal thing. That's why. What David Strait is talking about, and I believe he'll be a real strong player in explaining things to people. Like, I think we need to have him. Now you're out of debt. Like, you're the children of Israel, right? And you come out of Egypt. What does it mean that you're out of Egypt, mm-hmm. in essence? Okay. What does that mean to you? And don't let it happen again, in essence. That's that's the whole point. So I think a Nassar is a is an all-encompassing point, not just a monetary thing. And I and I say to people, get they get, well, I don't have any debt. I go, wonderful. That means you know how to live on a budget. Every single person in the world is going to have to learn how to live within their means. The debt system is not going to work anymore. It's going to be a value-based system. So when you look at all this stuff, I mean, we're going to have businesses that are going to radically change because they they have been working. I mean, you you know that most people in business use debt to get ahead. So they buy out something with debt and they have to make enough money over that debt. And that's how they, that's how we do that. Well, it's going to change where you have to be a value-based system because the gold will change to that because and so every person from the person who is homeless is trying to now move, getting on her feet and and get into an apartment, um, the credit system goes away. They're like, do you have the capability of doing this? So as a society, we need to take care of the people who are on SSDI, disability. We need to boost their numbers. We need to boost the people who are on Social Security. That's part of it, Right. We need to help the people and we need to create new jobs all over all over the world so that people, if you can work, work. You don't want to sit around and be in Wally, fat and sassy, not, not do anything. That is unproductive to, to your life. You need to be doing things that make a difference. And when you see that kind of thing, and here's the thing, what, what a, a salary does is a salary or a payment, you know, for your, it's actually um, totally biblical. Um, You do a day's wage and you account and you get paid for it. And you don't have, you don't have it taken out of your um, capability. That's in James five, three through seven, in Mm -hmm. essence. Um, So having a day's wage for the work that you do is the way that this needs to be. So, Again, we need to take care of the people that, that can't possibly work, fine. Um, but the people that can work, they need to work and they need to be able to feel like, you know what, I'm making a difference. And so I don't care who you are. If, if you're a high earner, low earner, massive debt, don't have any debt, you're all going to benefit from the system in fascinating ways you haven't imagined. Absolutely. I mean, you'll be able to do what you love pursue your passion and the finances will be there where they weren't before. But just to loop around and summarize real quick, Scott. So in terms of the war aspect, um, should people from your purview- Oh, sorry. Occur- no, that's okay. I just want to make sure people don't think we didn't answer the question. Yeah, um, no, I I was, I was screwed up there. Uh, okay. So I, I, that's why I believe very, very heavily on the EBS, on the EAS thing. Mm-hmm. I think you absolutely have to do it. Why? One reason, you have the lying media, okay? As a person who the average age of my patients are 70 years old, you're talking about a whole group of people who are not on social media at all. I mean, they just get on Facebook and see their friends. They don't know any of this stuff, right? That mm-hmm. is that is leaving them behind, and that is criminal, okay? 
there that you cannot do this. You got the lying media. You got to take the liars out of this. That's what the EBS really is. It's about taking away government influence and taking away media influence. And, and when you do that, you allow truth to come out. And by the way, you know, voices back and forth. Why well, disagree on, you know, should we build the roads or should we build the schools? That's a great conversation. Let's let's work that thing through, right? And there's going to be a lot of argument and, and good stuff, but that's what a good constitutional republic actually does. So those wars that they're telling you about, those are what they want. We're going, screw that. I'm not going to war. What happens is it, what Nassara actually does is says, no, we're not doing a war. So I believe what's happening, what the EBS actually is, is a, it's the Scott term, my term only, fake false flag. 911 mm. is a false flag people died right one of the the first and i don't know if it's the very first but one of the first would be the titanic is a false flag you know thousands and thousands of people die there's questions whether it really did happen but whatever it's just know that we have people that die but those kinds of things is how the cabal goes look over here and not what i'm doing over here keep looking don't don't watch me right but now what we have to do is create a fake false flag. It stops everyone in their tracks. Like when Kennedy was shot, everyone said, I knew exactly where I was. I knew in the moment that that happened. Now for the today's generation, other than the Z, today's generation goes, you know, I knew exactly where I was at 9-11. I, right, John, you can tell me the second you were, you saw the second plane hit into the tower or that you learned of it, you're like, I knew where it was. I knew what happens. It burns a moment in time. And mm -hmm. I believe that EBS kind of thing is that moment in time where everyone stops and says, wait, what is that? And that is, I believe that's the cease to that war, those fake wars. Yeah. I was there, by the way, that day physically. I was on a train coming in, so that's right. I remember you saying that. Yeah, you know, we're talking about that. So that 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 hits home big time for me and and a lot of people. I know I said this was the last question. I apologize for giving okay. me, give me grace. I just have one more question because I know, uh, you know, people are going to ask about it. But you touched on it. You know, President Trump in an interview, I think a couple of weeks ago with a female reporter, the name escapes me. Uh, he said publicly, and it was for optics again, like you said, for the lying media that he's gonna release the Epstein files and the 9-11 files. So people wanna see justice and truth come out. Do you think once he releases that information, um, people are gonna be able to handle it? Is there gonna be some cognitive dissonance? How, how are the Patriots prepared to mitigate that damage control? Well, I mean, I think there's three main areas that have to be dealt with. COVID is the, the cover for Nassara. And by the way, what are we hearing about? We're hearing Fauci telling you all the truth about this. So do we have a ton of people talking about this? And right. and and most people don't even believe COVID is even really around. I mean, forget about us, okay? But most people, normies, they're they're kind of going, do we have to really worry about COVID? You know, kind of things. That that's a killer that we have to kill off. The election fraud. Why is President Trump being um, persecuted for election stuff? That has to be killed off. And the last one is the child trafficking thing. And so I think those are th the three main points that have to be number one killed. It does not mean that we don't need to talk about JFK, 9-11, all the, you know, World War I, World War II, blah, blah, blah. I mean, but here's what I believe is coming. Once you, you kill those things as a touchstone. And by the way, all three of those, people will look at it and go, you know, I knew that there were trial traffickers. You know, I knew that COVID didn't make sense, right? I mean, whatever, however, even if they're normie types. Right. Um, and forget about the four to six percenters that really, they're just gonna be too crazy not have to work, not figure it out. But I believe that those other, they're powerful statements. We need to talk about 9-11. Um, we need to talk about Vietnam why Vietnam restarted right after um, JFK dies and what Lyndon B. Johnson did. Okay, those are those are powerful statements. But um, those kinds of events are not necessarily 
today. Guess what will happen? Um, I believe that there are people like Mary Crowley. I believe that, and some people don't like him, uh, Nick um, Alvear. Um, lots of other people are going to step up and go, you know what? We're going to create documentaries. We're going to create historical dramas. And we're going to go back in time and look at what 1871 Corporation really was. Let's look at the Civil War. Let's look at the Revolutionary War. Let's look at World War I. Let's look at, at those things. I believe that the, the nation is going to crave writers, movies, all of this kind of thing, documentaries of new kinds of things. And I believe that we need to we need to foster that. Um, I'm going to tell you, there's a band called We the Kingdom. It's a it's a uh, it's a Christian band, obviously, and it's also a worship kind of worship, you know, um, one. And they do uh, they do a song called um, uh, "Don't Tread on Me." Mm -hmm. If you listen to that song, now it talks about the blood of Jesus. It's so like patriot level kind of stuff. I believe there's going to be music that's going to come out of this that's going to speak to people. That is got to, that will happen. So I believe that we're going to talk about all those things, but those are a little bit later down the road. You've got to deal with the most important things. You know, you got to put priority lists. Like if I walk into an off season as a sports team, I might go, you know, I better deal with that shooting guard thing or it's going to just bite me. But I need to like, you know, bring in new talent over here. So that's a secondary conversation that we have to look at. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Dr. Scott, for covering that. Always a pleasure to have you, brother. Um, where can people find your work? Yeah, so you can just go drscottyoung.com. So make sure you go in there. Don't go any other place. That's where we have, you know, you can see the social media. You can kind of uh, go on and download lots of cool little documents off of there. You can see the books. By the way, I just got uploaded a bunch of audio books that were on audible books kind of thing. Some Amazon's still screwing with me on some of the books. They won't let my, me do Revelations of the Red Pill right now, uh, and they won't let me put it out. Uh, hmm. So that's just them screwing with me, and that'll be fixed as well in the future too. But that's what you can find to be able to take, to check into things. Nice. Always a pleasure having you, brother. Uh, we'll look forward to having you in the future as this uh, comes to its pantheon conclusion. And uh, look forward to seeing you on the other side as well. So thank you for that. And we'll look forward to seeing you again in the future. Sounds good. We'll see you.